Welcome to this week's Cattle Call. I'm Susan Littlefield on the Rural Radio Network. Yeah, kind of a, the doldrums of summer, shall we say. The heat is here. Is that affecting the livestock? Well, it might be affecting the way we see um, some movement going on. It's feeders. Are they too high? Where are we sitting when it comes to the cash in the north? And really, how current are these cattle? Plus, I'm going to ask Brad to put his geek hat on because we haven't talked since that uh, uh, inventory report came out on Friday. So we'll kind of get his thoughts on what those numbers have to say on this week's show. And I think, Brad, maybe we need to start out with that because the inventory report came out on Friday. Everybody said, oh, surprise, surprise. Heifers aren't being retained like we thought. Thanks for asking that because I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking kind of dull today. I was trying to come up with something, you know, exciting, uh, uh, what, what, something that was different than yesterday. But anyway, no, I, I think it's worth reflecting a little bit, at least if like you called me a number nerd here on the cattle thing. I, I think that the inventory reports are quite interesting, um, more than most traders think they are, because, yeah, they, you never see that they really get reacted to a lot. Although uh, this one certainly uh, you could see on um, on Monday's trade with the deferred cattle, June, next June, next August cattle sharply higher, almost two dollars higher. Uh, you know, reflecting, I think, a response to the cow herd, which is the lowest in 52 years. Um, as you mentioned, um, um, also with the um, uh, lack of retention, uh, didn't change those percentages, really. Uh, the other thing that uh, I, I maybe uh, had, had mentioned earlier last week was that this uh, monthly cattle and feed report, because it's the end of a quarter, is more... Um, it's more thorough. It actually breaks out the placements, uh, whether the placements were steers or heifers. And, and like you, uh, like you said, uh, the number of uh, heifers placed during that quarter was almost identical to the number of heifers placed last year during the same quarter. Um, so yeah, it's. Uh, I, I would you know caution everybody before they get real caught up in that is don't forget it's July. Uh, the north, uh, I think, is going to you know, be a little more reflective of whether there's heifer retention in the north when we start getting out into that third and fourth quarter, especially the fourth quarter. We'll see that's what those numbers look like by then. Um, you know, a little side note here means that we're talking about, uh, you know, macro stuff here today. Um, and, and that, you know, don't one robin doesn't make it spring, as somebody would, has said to me before. But uh, so I don't know if any of you guys are watching this northern video. I have been um, this week. Um, just rough count calves. Uh, I, I counted about 88,000 steer calves and 22,000 heifer calves on that sale. Four to one more steers than heifers. I don't know. Maybe there's a different way you sell heifers off of that. I, I do think probably more heifers might move direct and they might be, you know, speculating on some replacement quality heifers. But I, I just, I was astounded that, uh, that, that, that was so out of proportion that way. So I would still think the next move here is to look ahead to see if we don't get that heifer retention and see what that doesn't do to first quarter supplies, particularly of fat cattle next, next, next year. Well, it's very surprising to me. Maybe it shouldn't be the amount of social media posts I've seen. I know I sent you a screenshot as well of some of these sale barns with these cow numbers. So it makes me wonder, are we getting rid of cows and keeping some of the younger ones? Well, that would be what, one would normally expect and I, right. you ask a great question and and i everybody that i think has a has a vote here i've been asking that question and i get a, a, a little bit of diverse answers to that now you go down to missouri and it's liquidation period because of drought uh there's areas of kansas that are still that way um that that so you know did you have some placements out of that area a lightweight category was where the big placements came from of course that's six weight and under and you saw an uptick in the foreign uh, uh placements with with some of these states that border mexico uh where you saw some mexican uh, an uptick in the mexican imports but so all of that but you know you think about the average age of the rancher is no spring chicken something like 76 or 77 years old I've had a number of people, even where they're sitting in areas like the Dakotas, North Dakota, Montana, where they've got all kinds of grass. Some of these guys are saying, you know, I'm getting $2,000, $2,300 mm -hmm. for a cow. I'm about sick of it anyway. This maybe is my retirement. And so it's this one's a little tougher call than 2013, uh, you know, where they just flipped a switch. It started to rain. We retained heifers. We held cows. Um, and I don't think that's all bad for the industry because we can go gradually into these lower numbers and maybe we can have a gradually better market for a longer sustained period than we did in that 2014 slot. 
So let's take a look at the fact that we're in, and you mentioned, there's not a lot going on right now. It's kind of the doldrums, so we say, of summer. But for the most part, as you look at the overall picture, cattle market's doing pretty good. Not too bad a doldrum, I would say, Susan. Well said. Uh, here we are. You know, um, I'm, 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 you know, I'm a bit sarcastic, but we all know that the cattle market breaks the week before Father's Day, right? We all know that the box beef is going to go down $35 after that. And we all know that cash cattle always go lower. I'm being facetious because you heard me say the same thing, that that's what my expectation would be likely seasonally. That's what we would do. Here we are almost to the end of July and uh, box beef dropped 11 percent off the highs. Um, but where's cash? Uh, well, Friday, it was 190, which is the all time high. Um, cash has done spectacular hanging in here through this uh, this, this first part of the summer. Um, now you get two weeks down the road or so. There's people already talking about maybe the boxes have bottomed here. I'm not sure if quite yet. Maybe we got a week or two yet, maybe of chopping around, I think. But uh, then typically you'd start to rally going into that two, three weeks ahead of Labor Day. Uh, and, and some of those features change back here to the stake items. So um, currentness is a big deal. Um, there was a little 188 bid around up here in the north today. Uh, which is pretty good for a Wednesday. Uh, didn't buy any cattle yet to speak of. Um, so, you know, it feels like fully steady kind of prices is what it feels to me like here this week. Do you have any concerns at how warm it is and, and the continued advisories that we see and the, and the stress that this might mean on cattle weight gains and just cattle in general? I think if you're bearish, you'll talk about nobody's going to feel like going out to cook a steak. Hey. I, I guess I'm not in that camp. Uh, you know, you, the bulk of the population is on the West Coast and the East Coast, right? Um, and those of us hard-headed people like me, I'm going to cook a steak tonight anyway, frankly, and have sweet corn. Um, but I, the, the the what happens to cattle, particularly in cattle that are in outside feed yards and, and, and maybe don't have the ability to get under shade and, and sprinklers and stuff like that. And what happens, of course, anybody that feeds cattle knows what happens. They don't eat. And when they don't eat, they don't gain. Uh, and then you even have the risk of some, you know, uh, heat stress related type, even death losses. So um, I, to me, these kind of, this kind of weather thing ultimately would actually in balance, I think actually be supportive because of the less weight, less cattle, um, you know, less gain uh, type of a thing. But um, hopefully uh, your part of the world gets a little bit of rain um, and, and gives us a break here. We were supposed to get some last night, didn't. Um, and today's supposed to be our hottest day. Hopefully we get a little better after this. As we look towards next week and hard to believe August, any, any final thoughts on the way that July trade went? Um, much better than expected, I think, for most. Um, and you have a market that's still discount, futures market discounted to northern cash by a long ways. And I, and I guess I know it sounds like an old record here, but I, I, I think the difference here is that, um, okay, the beginning and end of every market starts in Iowa. Maybe you'll, somebody can argue with me. You can argue, I want, you're not going to change my mind. I'm talking about the cattle market. When we're backlogged in Iowa, you usually got a problem. We are the opposite of that. We are a month pulled forward in, on our inventory instead of always being a month late, which often we are here where well, we just feed these calves. So they weigh 1600 pounds. That's what we do. Um, now we're selling cattle away 14 and a quarter, 14 and a half. Uh, I think that the leverage that that gives for the, for the feed yard, uh, it, it, it's hard to put enough emphasis on how much that's helped us here. So um, yeah, we got a task keeping the sell meat this high, but so far so good. Um, I, you know, we chop along here through this next uh, end of this calf crop. It makes you pretty excited with where we might be going by the end of the fourth quarter. All right. We'll catch up with you in August. Hard to believe it's next week. I know. Sounds good. All right. Hey, how do folks get a hold of you if they want to talk more? Oh, hey, our website's easy, kkbtrading.com. Or we still actually have a telephone here, too, 712-722-0023. Thanks. Thank you. As we always remind you, commodity futures and options do involve a substantial risk of loss and not suitable to all investors. And that's been this week's Cattle Call on the Rural Radio Network.